Good morning and welcome to All Saints in St. George's. We're glad you're here. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have, have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. 
For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male, or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us read together Psalm 19 in unison. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells his tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. And the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bread room out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to thy eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the calm. But then also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be old and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to, those, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through the wisdom, but God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and the foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. of love who is our father and mother Jesus Christ the incarnate word and the Holy Spirit who lives and moves and has her being in us and among us Amen. 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 you can have a seat no need to stand for the sermon <laughs> some of you are aware that I like the Marvel fran uh, Marvel franchise movies these movies include movies about Captain America, Captain Marvel, Iron Man, and the Incredible Hulk, and many, many other characters. I can't remember how many movies there are in total, but I, I think there are about 24 or so, and, you, and you're supposed to watch them in a certain sequence so that you, you get the whole picture of the Marvel world. And one of the characters uh, in one of the movies and continues through the rest of the series is Doctor Strange. And I've been thinking about his character this week as I studied for uh, today's sermon. You see, Doctor Strange is played by Benedict Cumberbatch, whose name in the movie is Doctor Stephen Strange. And he's an incredibly gifted, talented surgeon who loses the ability to operate when his hands are mangled in a horrific car accident. He, he spends all his time and money investigating cutting edge surgeries in order to find some kind of way to return to his former life as a surgeon. Frankly, it's his entire identity, so he's desperate. He's understandably angry at his situation but that anger is exacerbated by the fact that Stephen is a total egomaniac who has built his entire life on his photographic memory and intellectual skill culminating in a stellar career as a surgeon. He is, in fact, very pompous, self-centered, and really believes he knows it all and can control it all. He has never been faced with a situation in his life that he couldn't think his way out of until his hands become useless. As the story continues, Stephen goes halfway around the world looking for surgeons and surgeries until he finally ends up in a place in Kathmandu to a little hole in the wall where he meets a powerful sorceress called the Ancient One 
who has a kind of martial arts school for the mystical arts. Their mission is to protect the Earth from alien attack. But after his initial introduction to the Ancient One, Stephen behaves so cynically, so badly, so pompously, that he literally gets thrown out before he even formally begins to ask for help. In effect, this is Stephen Strange's Dark Night of the Soul, where he realizes he has nowhere else to turn. He either humbles himself, begs for re-entry on their terms, not his terms, or he returns to his hometown with an uncertain future. After a number of hours of banging on the door, the Ancient One finally allows Stephen in to study, and the one word that is repeatedly uh, said to him over and over again is, Surrender, Stephen. Surrender. Now, surrender is not something that comes easy to anyone, but particularly to Americans who have a can-do attitude that they, I think, inherited from their Puritan foremothers and forefathers. This is the mentality that says, pull yourself together, man. The idea of white flags and the word surrender was probably what kept us in various world skirmishes way after they were wise moves. And I'm sure there are plenty of books with the title, Never Surrender. I know one for sure is written by General Jerry Boykin, who was the commander and one of the original members of the Delta Force in, in charge of the 1993 Battle of Mogadishu, which is portrayed in the movie Black Hawk Down. Nope. In our world, surrender is a four-letter word. George Carlin summarized it best when he spoke about modern man who promotes the idea of nice guys finish last, don't snooze or you lose, keep the pedal to the metal, have a power lunch, take a powered walk, wear a power tie, and take a power nap, and never let them see you sweat. As Doctor Strange trains in the mystic arts, he gets better and better, but only because he finally surrenders his will and his ego over to the mystical power that supports all life. He comes to realize that there is something actually more powerful than his ego and his willpower. And he ends up becoming a great sorcerer and of course, in the end, saves the world. Now this is not as strange a story as it might sound. This is the story of every person who is a member of any 12-step group who has admitted they were powerless over their ego and or addiction and has surrendered to a power greater than themselves. So we return once again to our opening collect. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now there was a time when I would have looked at that collect and immediately rebelled. <laughs> yeah, well, that's me. <laughs> I, like Stephen Strange, would have heartily objected in all my ego-centered frailty that I absolutely do have power to make changes. And some of you will agree, we have made changes. I would object that the church is trying to infantilize us Make us rely on them. But the truth is, when we look at even just the Ten Commandments and some of the teachings of Jesus, like love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, or even just ignore you, you come to realize that there are 
plenty of times in our life that we are in need of a power greater than ourselves, just like Stephen Strange. And the spiritual tradition across all the religious board calls this humility, where we acknowledge that there are indeed some things in life that we have to admit we cannot do alone. God can, and all we have to do is choose whether or not we'll allow God to take the wheel. In Alcoholics Anonymous, there are two terms for someone who has quit drinking. There's a sober drunk and a dry drunk. A sober drunk is a person who has turned his or her will over to the care of God and is now working a spiritual program. In other words, the 12 steps. A dry drunk is someone who stops drinking, but because they aren't working the 12 steps with a sponsor, they're usually just as puffed up, angry, and or depressed as they were before they stopped drinking, and in some cases, even more angry. Until Dr. Strange hit rock bottom where he had absolutely nowhere else to turn for help, he remained in misery. Once he surrendered and came to understand that there might be another way to live, he grew as a person in compassion and humility and began a whole new life. Millions of addicts of whatever kind have also found this to be true. Until they hit some kind of rock bottom with their addiction and finally surrendered their will and their ego over to a power greater than themselves, their true freedom would be on hold. And the hope is that they wouldn't die before they would find it. But once surrendered, an entirely new life of hope opened up and they find a whole new life where they will never be alone in their misery or in their joy. And there's plenty of joy. So today's collect is a very powerful truth if we have ears to hear and a humble heart to accept. And just as an aside, I really have to point to myself one more time for a very, very brief moment. If God can take this impoverished little kid who grew up in the projects with an alcoholic single parent and changed her into who you see today, fallible yes, goofy yes, not as smart as many other priests, certainly. <laughs> and I still wrestle with my ego as well. But I'm here and whole and alive and kicking and always dedicating my life to God. As I've often said, I should be dead in jail or on the street, and yet here I am. You can't tell me that God doesn't continually save humanity. And as a child who was always laughing in church and getting in trouble for it in the choir when I was growing up, you can't say God doesn't have a sense of humor. <laughs> and this brings me to our epistle lesson today. Paul says, the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. And then the passage ends with, For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Thanks be to God. If you hear nothing else in your life that makes any difference, this is the pinnacle of true wisdom. The message of the cross is that it is only in surrender and acknowledgement of our weakness that we come to understand our need for a power greater than ourselves so that we are born to new life, a life you cannot imagine. Only in surrender to whatever it is 
that binds us, whether that's an addiction to people, places, things, getting our own way, resentments, hatred or prejudice, only in surrender to an acknowledgement of the fact that there are some things we can do nothing about, will the power of God be able to penetrate all the walls that we have built up in our ego over the years in order to work God's healing power through us, for us, and for the world. It doesn't mean that we stand by and do nothing, but we place ourselves in a more receptive, more open and teachable mentality to try doing things in a new way, a way we're not frankly used to, a way that perhaps isn't all that comfortable at first, a way that simply means openness to change. Just remember for a moment the movie I showed you called Accidental Courtesy about Daryl Davis, an African-American who's who purposefully befriends active members in the Ku Klux Klan to help them overcome their prejudice just by getting to know a black man. It's an outrageous way to confront racism, but it works. And let me tell you from experience, when you grow up in an alcoholic or even just a dysfunctional family, trust does not come easy. To trust God while we walk through tremendous change is a spiritual practice all its own, and it takes years. Something else about the message of the cross that's so important to remember is that it is in weakness that God's power is made so undeniably strong. Jesus chose 12 disciples more than 2,000 years ago, and here we are. Who would have thought? God chose Moses, a person who had some kind of speech impediment, to stand before great Pharaoh and demand that he let the Hebrew slaves go. If you look all through the scriptures, in fact, God always chooses the most unlikeliest of people. Hello. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> the most unlikeliest of people, the weaker or younger siblings over the older ones to do God's work. And it's not because they're the better choice, but because they are the most unlikeliest choice, just like Gideon, just like Jacob, just like Joseph, just like David, who was out with the sheep in the field. Just like Peter. Just like you and me. And on and on and on. Now why is this foolishness of the cross good news? It's not just because death has no power over us, but that God has made an eternal covenant with humanity that if we only humble ourselves, admit that we are in fact powerless over some of our attitudes, some, some things and situations and people in our life, and admit that we, we could use some help, God will speak to us, through us, and through others, more importantly, who are also weak and in need of God in order to direct us to the next steps that we need to take. And ultimately, that gives us hope. Hence, you have incredibly fallible people like me standing before you. And it's not, has nothing whatsoever to do with worthiness or because we are smarter than anybody else but because God makes us worthy. Same goes for you. So let go of all the messages we get in our culture. Let go of being highly effective. Just be yourself and call on Jesus. Be open, be teachable, be willing to allow God to open you up to new ways 
of doing things, new worlds to explore, new people, and allow the amazing grace of the Holy Spirit to enter into all of those relationships. And I think you're going to find, like me, that the sky is truly the limit because what does it mean to make the sign of the cross? But I no longer live, but Christ lives in me and through me. And through me, Christ can do all kinds of stuff. And the same goes for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. in need of your grace and favor. 
We trust in the promise you have made to hear our prayers in the name of your son, Jesus. We pray for wisdom, courage, and strength for all of your followers, especially those in leadership of your church. Set their hearts on you alone. We pray for the leaders of the nation, that they protect and provide for their people and work for peace and justice. We pray for those who struggle with disappointments, with financial insecurities, with grief over lost loved ones or lost dreams. We pray for the relief of pain for those whose bodies and hearts ache. We ask for healing for all who suffer. We pray for those who have died and now rest in your eternal embrace, especially Larry Pfeiffer. Comfort the loved ones who mourn their loss. All this we ask, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name, the one who lived and moved among us in our broken world and who loves us still. Amen. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of all souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Shalom Aleichem, Salam al Messiah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with, with you.
and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A blessing for the journey of seeking God. When your soul whispers of its deepest longings, may you quiet yourself to listen. May you follow the path of yearning to the one alone who blends the uneven edges into a life of meaning. May you meet and be united with God and give thanks for the whispers that led you there. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Incarnate Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, be, Thanks to God. be to God.
Holy Week, a new beginning. We are currently planning our Holy Week services around a series of safe outdoor, indoor, and recorded celebrations for both All Saints and St. George's congregations. So look for information next week in a more detailed schedule. And please continue to pray for the safe regathering of our community. Thanks. Thank you.